Over the past few years, Marvel has simultaneously made their multiverse more complicated while still attempting to mold it into something that isn't impenetrable, and I've already made countless videos talking about that very subject. However, there is one mystifying aspect that I haven't talked about yet, because with this particular designation, Marvel has made their primary universe bafflingly unclear as to what it is and where it exists along their infinite multiverse. And the weird thing is, it's an easy fix. But instead of giving it any other name, like the name it's already been given when it comes to everything outside their cinematic releases, for some reason, the MCU has chosen to give their mainline universe the number 616. Kevin, what are you doing? It's not 616. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and not a lot can make me upset, especially when it comes to superhero movies, because it's easy to look on the optimistic side. They're superheroes. But this... This I cannot stand. Coined first by David Thorpe, Alan Davis, and Alan Moore while they were working on Captain Britain in the early 80s, and was mainly used to differentiate from UK pre-publication issues to the Marvel run that they were working on, and it was never meant to catch on. Yet, like a lot of Alan Moore's work that he's since gone back around on, it's become incredibly impactful, especially once the term was further used in an anthology series not long after that, funnily enough, was called The Daredevils. After that, in a few more appearances in Marvel 1602, Marvel Knights, The Uncanny X-Men, and a few more, the numbered identifier became common knowledge. To be fair, it wasn't used that often, but every time it came up, it hammered it more and more that the mainline universe that everything pivots around is 616. Because of the current confusion, comic writers have been forced to find a new name for their universe, which they have chosen to call Prime Earth. And I'm glad they did, because there should be no need to further complicate their already unfathomably convoluted multiverse. And if we just want to put a point on the board for the comic side, thanks to Jonathan Hickman and the Maker, that has been made more simple and compelling lately. But that's all something Kevin Feige and the other heads at Marvel Studios seem to be unconcerned with. Frankly, comics are better than ever, which is great considering what's going on with the MCU and the fact that the DC movies have a year to even get started. The return of the Ultimate Universe has been so much fun, which is only counting what we've gotten so far of Black Panther and the X-Men, but most of all, the Avengers and Spider-Man is what has gotten me to eagerly await each new installment. Those last two might just go down as all-timers. And then there's the DC side, and this has nothing to do with Marvel's 616 situation, but I just gotta say that Absolute Batman is great. There's only one issue, and it came out very recently, but I'm already desperate for more. And it got me somewhat interested in DC's whole Absolute Universe story, despite their last big event only being, what, two years ago? And the one prior was only a year before that. But Absolute Batman still managed to be a fantastic Elseworlds story that I was amazed immediately intrigued by. And though I veered off into a tangent, newer comic progression is relevant, because it demonstrates how comics may still be constantly pulling stunts and coming up with new titles for their universes no matter what, but at least three quarters of the time it is done with purpose. When the MCU went to find a name for their universe, they presumably couldn't think of anything unique, so they then just decided to use the one that the comics had. And there is no purpose behind that choice aside from laziness. There are plenty of examples of creators writing something that supposedly takes away from someone else's work, and I've never believed in that sentiment, because that is almost never the case. But with this, there might be an argument that that is actually happening. Because by labeling the MCU as 616, that means that it cannot exist alongside the comics. Something I may not want to happen, but should be an option. Even if it's just in the audience's mind, where these stories are canonically happening in a multiverse that includes the comics. And that is incredibly important because it separates the character as a whole from a particular interpretation. When imagining who these seminal characters are, your mind may immediately go to a popular live-action portrayal, but there is nothing wrong with having other depictions of them running at the same time. When it comes to their narrative purpose and their public perception, they should never be limited to only having one interpretation. That would be ridiculous. As pointed out by many of the comments in my video about how Marvel shouldn't reboot, these characters transcend any actor portraying them. Robert Downey Jr. and J.K. Simmons have been able to redefine their roles in such an impactful way that it ripples into the comics, but all of these characters came long before the MCU and will exist long after. It's why in 50 years, if the MCU is still alive and kicking, then a reboot would be more than fine. Though I know as an old geezer, I'd still be saying, no, stay with the characters you've set up. 
But even when you're looking at superheroes and intellectual property in general, there will never be anything wrong with having multiple versions. For the past couple decades, there have been concurrent movies and TV shows featuring any number of superheroes. There's of course the biggest example, animated shows, but there are so many more. Batman is constantly rebooted, and sometimes with a little overlap, and people can understand that each is a different version. No one is asking why Affleck's Batman isn't the one starring in Matt Reeves' crime saga. They get it. And in a similar vein, many characters were introduced to audiences in the Arrowverse, as if being used as a testing pad for DC's theatrical movies. And that's more of a crackpot conspiracy, but if that was the case, I think it's pretty funny that some of them, like The Flash, lasted infinitely longer than their movie counterparts. But I'm bringing all of this up because I want to show how it's only bad when it comes to having variants of the same person within the same universe. Fox's X-Men and Marvel's current multiverse have been made confusing because they intentionally or inadvertently present that. Which brings me back to the name of Marvel's sacred timeline, and to the main reason why I was inspired to make this video. Because Marvel's handbook says the MCU is 616. Officially. And this is not topical news, the handbook was released a year ago, but my anger has been stewing for that whole time, and I just had to talk about it. It's bad enough that the writers of any somewhat multiversal project go out of their way to claim it's taking place in 616, but the informational guide saying it just cements this. I don't read them that much nowadays because I'm a grown adult who doesn't have time for handbook guides for children, with their disputable power levels and cool diagrams with exploded view drawings. Alright, sometimes I'll bust one out. But the point is I used to love diving into them as a kid, and I would take everything in it as fact. So when a kid picks up the new MCU handbook and reads that the movies take place in Universe 616, they'll take it as a given. And that will undoubtedly not affect anything in their actual life, but there's a chance that they go to read a Marvel comic and see that it is also happening in Universe 616. Multiple questions arise, like are these characters from the comics and the movies supposed to be the same person? Not the same character in a different interpretation, but literally the exact same. Just as I mentioned before, and honestly if nothing else, what needs to be taken away from this video is that there should be no reason to further complicate your already convoluted multiverse. Make it as easy and digestible as possible for the moviegoers. And it's nuts, because I've gotten this far without bringing up that there is a definite number designation for the MCU, which has appeared in a theatrical movie. It sucks that it wasn't in the MCU, but Spider-Verse had it right when Miguel was talking about Doctor Strange in that little nerd in universe 19999. All I'm saying is this better all be a long con and the writers are pulling something that can shock everyone with some crazy detail. Maybe the maker has been tinkering with the multiverse behind the scenes more than we ever realized, and that tampering has been affecting the movies? But even with that, or any other in-universe explanation, it wouldn't be enough to mend the mistrust and perceived mismanagement that has enveloped my thoughts whenever I think of the MCU. Come on, how in the world did Quentin Beck accurately say that they're in Universe 616? It just doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's not Marvel's long con, but Mysterio's. We all know he's not dead, so what's he got cooking up? Could be this. But in all seriousness, it just hurts to see creatives in control that have not been creative enough to come up with any other number to call their universe. So to conclude, let's look at a quote from a true comic lover and mastermind that Marvel should be looking to more. Perhaps Iman Vellani should be consulting, because when asked about this topic, she had this to say. I have this argument with Kevin every time I meet him in person. It's not all 616. The MCU is definitely 19999. You can't take it from the Marvel Comics canon. That was the main comics canon where all the events took place. In that canon, Kamala is an inhuman. There's Lockjaw. House of M took place with the X-Men. Where's all that stuff with MCU if it is 616? I rest my case. And if the young actress who played Miss Marvel for her first professional acting job is more knowledgeable than the leagues of comic stands working in Marvel's writer's room, then you know there's a problem. Do you agree that giving the MCU the name 616 confuses its relation to the comic universe? Do you think that that takes away from the events that have happened in the 616 comics? Am I blowing all of this out of proportion? Drop a comment below and give me your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.